Welcome to this segment of my educational series on prosthetics, orthotics, and amputee rehabilitation. My name is Dr. Heike Ustall. I'm a specialist in rehabilitation medicine, and I hope this is an educational and enjoyable video. Thank you. Hey, welcome back. It's Dr. Ustall here again. In this segment, we're going to talk about below the knee prosthetics and specifically about the socket, the part of the prosthesis that goes onto your leg, the part that's custom made that acts as the connection of your body to the prosthetic foot and eventually to the ground. There are several different parts and several steps along the way, so I'm going to explain each one as we go and some of the problems that you can have with each one. So first let's talk just a little bit about material and what we call these things. The socket itself is this piece from the connector up. This is the part that's custom made and you see that there are contours to it. It's shaped to match your limb, but it's also shaped to put more pressure on some areas and less than others. So you see how there is a bump here and that indentation should go right under your kneecap, we'll call the patellar tendon. It's the same place that you put pressure when you kneel down. So we put a little bit of extra pressure there because your body tolerates pressure there. We also try to grab the sides of the bone in the leg called the tibia because that will tolerate pressure. But we want very little pressure on the bottom of the cut end of the bone, so we want to have a little bit of extra space or cushion in there. This outer frame of the socket is typically called a laminated socket. There's a dark line here because this is carbon fiber lamination. Layers and layers of carbon fiber put over the mold of your leg that then creates a very strong, very hard, but very light prosthesis. Amputation below the knee, typically the part that is removed might weigh 8 to 10 pounds. The prosthesis should be about half of that, about 4 to 5 pounds. So the outer frame is what really provides most of the structure and support. But your skin wouldn't tolerate going directly into here, so we have to have a soft interface, a material that cushions your skin, your tissue to this hard outer shell, and also provides a way of holding on to you. And that holding on process is called suspension. So sometimes the interface material gives you cushion and suspension together. Sometimes it's two totally separate pieces. So we have several different materials that we might use as the soft interface. We have used a variety of gel materials recently. These gel liners can look like this, where they might be a color inside. Different colors. They come in different thicknesses, two millimeters, which is about an eighth of an inch, up to nine or 10 millimeters, which is almost half an inch. But the thicker you make the gel, the heavier it gets, and the harder it is to bend the knee. So we have a variety of selections from many different companies. They also have different density, meaning some are softer, some are harder. This one comes with what they call pre-flexed. It's bent a little bit, so when you sit down, it doesn't bunch up quite as much behind your knee. So gel is one of the most common interface materials that goes directly onto your skin. And the way the gel goes on is you turn it inside out. And then it goes directly against your skin. And then it rolls up. Now historically, we also had other ways of providing soft interface. We have also used soft foam materials. This is a maybe 3 16 to quarter inch thick foam that's shaped exactly to your leg. And this would actually go inside of the socket, providing a soft interface. Sometimes we even use a plastic material as an interface between your skin and the socket. Now the plastic is not very forgiving in the sense of cushioning, but it is very adjustable. So if we anticipate that your limb is going to have some changes, either steady changes or up and down changes, this kind of a plastic material will accommodate for adjustments. You can glue, grind, and put stuff on here, just like the foam is easy to adjust. The problem with the gel liners is that you can't make any adjustments at all. They just stay the same thickness. You can't glue anything to it. You can't grind anything. Now, you as the patient will also have another way of creating some adjustments, and that's with a variety of socks that we give you. And these also provide interface. These socks come very thin, what we call one-ply, almost like a t-shirt material. 
They can come with or without a hole in the bottom, and that will have to do with the suspension we'll talk about in a minute. Then we give you thicker socks. This is almost more like a sweatshirt material. Typically, we give you one ply, three ply, and five ply, thinner to thickest, and then you can match them up to give any number or any amount of thickness. When your limb shrinks down a little bit, you can add more socks, so it's still a nice snug fit. If your leg swells a little bit, you can take away some socks. So realistically, this is the adjustable part that you can mess with. Now, realistically, the socket itself is designed to be exactly like the shape of your leg. So if your leg changes dramatically, you may actually have to have a socket change. But let's talk a little bit about suspension. I mentioned about that's what holds it in place. Well, in the very beginning for your first prosthesis, we may have a gel liner that provides a soft interface. And this goes on your skin. You slide in here, but it will slip out very easily. So therefore, the suspension is provided by a second gel, which is on the outside. And this one now rolls up. I'm going to go down low a little bit here. So this rolls up onto your skin. So now you actually have one layer of gel inside, which is the soft interface, and a second layer of gel on the outside, which is the suspension sleeve. So suspension sleeve outside, gel liner inside, two separate pieces. However, in your more permanent prosthesis, you may actually have both the soft interface and suspension all built into one. That's why this pin is in the bottom. You put this gel liner on exactly the same way you would, turning it inside out, rolling it onto your skin, but then when you go to, to step into the prosthesis, there's actually a hole in the bottom. So when you step in, it locks into place. And that lock mechanism prevents it from pulling out. And when you want to take it off, there's a blue button on the side you push to release. So you can have the soft interface and suspension all built into one. That's why some of the socks don't have holes if you're putting it over a gel that doesn't have a pin, and other socks have a hole in the bottom if you're putting it over a gel with a pin. So there are a couple of different ways of doing this. So basically the most common for the starter leg is to use a gel liner inside with a suspension sleeve outside. The most common way for the permanent prosthesis is a gel liner with a pin. There are other ways too. There are what we call elevated vacuum systems where you can have a gel liner that might look like one of these guys but has a rubber ring around it and it's called a seal in liner and that creates an air seal inside the socket and there may be a tube that goes to a vacuum pump that literally sucks the air out and creates vacuum or suction inside there and prevents you from slipping out and when you want to remove it you push a button to release the vacuum and then you can pull the leg out so those are two or three of the most common ways of holding you in place and creating the suspension. Other things that have changed more recently are what we call adjustable sockets. You see, this is a sort of a hard outer frame that's all one piece. However, you can have floating panels that are cut out of here that you can adjust. So if you're afraid that your leg swells and shrinks a little bit each day, or let's say you have dialysis and you know every three days your leg gets smaller and then it gets bigger again, you can have these floating panels that are controlled with a dial and some cables that literally allows this socket to seem five or ten percent bigger or smaller and you can adjust it yourself. So adjustable sockets are becoming quite common now. They're a bit more work for the prosthetist to make but yet it's a lot more convenient for a patient that has a, a limb that changes shape or changes volume. Last but not least, let's talk a little bit about hygiene and skin issues. Because you're putting these gels directly against your skin, because you're trapped inside there for eight, 10, or 12 hours a day, some of these gels are somewhat forgiving. This blue one has a special kind of construction to it where it tries to actually cool your leg down. And realistically, it helps a little bit but everyone gets a little bit sweaty if it's a hot, humid day. So sometimes you have to take the leg off in the middle of the day, wipe off, dry off your leg, wipe out the gel liner, and then put it back on again. If you consistently have problems with perspiration, there are antiperspirants you can put on your skin the night before. 
Surt and Dry, and Dry Sol are two examples of those kind of products. So talk to your physician, talk to me about issues if you're having skin hygiene problems or perspiration problems. And then ultimately, these will wear out. As I mentioned, the prosthesis itself is a hard material, and this may last three to five years. But the soft interface material will likely wear out. We typically order two gel liners per patient per year. So you could go through 10 gel liners in the lifetime, the five-year lifetime of your prosthesis. So it's important for you to follow up with your doctor to make sure you have a good collection of your gel liner and your socks or have adjustments and see your prosthetist to make sure the fit of the socket is satisfactory. There are many other problems that can occur, things related to blisters and sores and ulcers. We're not going to talk about them today, but they would mean even more urgent return to see your doctor. Thank you for listening today.